What's up everybody, Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. You know, there's just so much that we learn after an Apple event and I like to marinate on it and just let it simmer for a couple days and let it pass. So this video here is everything that Apple didn't tell us about the Mac Studio, the Studio Display, the iPhone SE and the iPad Air. So let's just get right into it. And of course, we've got to start with the Mac Studio that I'm still just freaking out about. Like, I love this thing. And you might too, after the first benchmark for the M1 Ultra showed up on Geekbench and confirms that the M1 Ultra that's made of two M1 Max chips outperforms the highest end 28 core Mac Pro. Now the M1 Ultra had a single core score of 1,793 and a multi-core score of 24,055. That's compared to the highest end Mac Pro with a single core score of 1,152 and a multi-core score of 9,951. So based on these initial scores, the M1 Ultra is 56% faster in single core performance and 21% faster in multi-core performance. And yeah, I know we'll be seeing a lot more tests once the Mac Studio gets in people's hands. That's what I'm waiting for, but I'm really more interested in real world tests for things like rendering out videos and how much a difference that really makes for my workflow compared to the M1 Max, which is already a freaking beast. Now I'm just showing you this graphic from my M1 Max MacBook Pro review as a reference that compared export times of the same 19 minute video rendered out by these different machines. And look at this. I don't think I can even imagine what the M1 Ultra will do if it's twice as much processing power on paper. I was absolutely blown away by the M1 Max and sheesh, that was just like six months ago. So this is just another monumental leap and Apple even claimed the M1 Ultra's 64 GPU cores outperform the gold standard for GPUs with the RTX 3090. Now Apple's stats and performance for the M1 and the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, those numbers have held up over time so there's no reason to not trust their results and sure, it might beat the RTX 3090 on a benchmark, but even if you just want to game on a Mac, it just doesn't have anything close to the software support that PC gamers do. And then also, Apple's hardware is catered towards multimedia creation, so the hardware is used differently, but I just can't wait to see more test results as they keep on coming out. Now, Apple also releases their tech spec sheets after the announcements, and it's been revealed that the M1 Ultra version of the Mac Studio is a full two pounds heavier than the M1 Max version. Now, Apple told The Verge that both models have the same 370 watt power supply, but the additional weight is due to the M1 Ultra having a larger copper thermal module for heat dissipation compared to the M1 Max model that has an aluminum heat sink. So this is not a bigger power supply issue, but actually the physical weight of the heavier materials that makes the difference. Now, copper weighs 8.96 grams per cubic centimeter versus aluminum that weighs 2.70 grams. So if the heat sinks were designed exactly the same, the copper one would be roughly three times the weight. So let's just say it's just big bone. Now the release of the new Mac Studio also signaled the launch of Apple's black and silver color peripherals. They can now be purchased standalone for the very first time. Previously, they'd only been exclusively available with the Mac Pro, but now you'll be able to buy the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID and its numeric keyboard in black and silver. That's $199. You get the Magic Trackpad in black for $149, and the Magic Mouse in black, uh, that thing looks slick. That's $99, and you can order them today. And if you were hoping to get your hands on a Mac Studio, if Let's say you're just ordering the standard configurations for an M1 Max and M1 Ultra models. Those wait times are out to either early or late April, but if you wanna go in and custom configure any of them at any level, your delivery time jumps up to somewhere around late May to mid-June, which is 10 to 12 weeks from now. So either you got in early or you're gonna feel the pain of those shipping times. All right, we have so much more to tell you about the studio display, iPhone SE and iPad Air. But first, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Avast. Avast is a global leader in cybersecurity for more than 30 years and trusted by over 435 million users. Avast's new all-in-one solution, Avast One, helps you take control of your safety and privacy online through a range of features. You can learn more about Avast One at avast.com. It includes its award-winning antivirus that stops viruses and malware from harming your devices. Firewall protection keeps personal information secure and prevents attacks that seek to access our computers and steal our data. PC speed up, that optimizes the background activity of your apps in order to speed up your PC. And smart scan finds and removes viruses and resolves the most common privacy and performance issues through an optimization scan. Getting set up is really easy. All I did was just download the app, 
and then one click for the scan. And Avast One took care of the rest for me. Avast prevents over 1.5 billion attacks every month, and there are just so many features in this package that are looking out to protect you that just makes me feel like, you know, they got my back. With the Vast One, you can confidently take control of your online world without worrying about viruses, phishing attacks, ransomware, hacking attempts, and other cyber crimes. So learn more about Avast One at avast.com. All right, let's get back to the studio display because out of all the products announced, the most was revealed about this one after the keynote. Now, Apple showcased the different stand options, but the important thing to note here is that the display stands are not interchangeable. So whichever one you order, that's what you get. You aren't able to swap them out down the road. And the studio display starts at $1,599. The tilt and adjustable height stand is $400 for an upgrade, but it does not swivel between portrait and landscape mode like the Pro Display XDR does. The Visa mount adapter can be selected for no additional cost. There's also the nano texture glass option for the same low reflections that the Pro Display XDR has. That's gonna cost an additional $300. So if you wanted a fully decked out studio display, it would cost you $2,299. And yes, that is still less than half the price of an XDR, but it's not cheap either. Now, Apple confirmed to Mac rumors that the new studio display will work when connected to PCs, but many of the new features will just not carry over, so it will act pretty much just like a display. Features that require Mac OS are True Tone, so that won't work when connected to a PC. The built-in webcam will work and function normally, but the center stage feature won't work on a PC. And then Apple also says screen resolution will vary from system to system. There were also early reports that studio displays would not work with the fourth generation iPad Air or iPad Mini 6. Now it's been clarified that they will, but the display will downscale to a 1440p output. And that's because although they have a USB-C port, they are different than what the iPad Pro has and they don't have enough data throughput to support the studio display. Now the iPad Pro third gen and later, the iPad Pro 11 inch and the new iPad Air fifth generation will work without any issue. The studio display is also compatible with Macs as far back as 2016 and you can see the entire list. Cross your fingers to check it out and make sure to see if yours makes the cut. The studio display comes with a one meter Thunderbolt cable in the box, but if you want more length, Apple is selling a 1.8 meter Thunderbolt 4 Pro cable for $129. There's an even longer three meter option that's coming soon for $159. And the Thunderbolt 4 Pro cable supports Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, and USB 4 data transfer up to 40 gigabits per second. USB 3.1 Gen 2 data transfers up to 10 gigabits and then pass through charging for up to 100 watts for a connected MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. And, you know, I'm really sorry to bring this sensitive topic up, but the standard studio display will not come with an Apple polishing cloth. I'm sorry. Only the Nano Texture Studio Display option, that will come with a cloth. And if you want one, it costs 19 US dollars. And I know there's a lot of you out there that just want one. You can still get it. Now, in case you were wondering, the latest report from display analyst Ross Young says that Apple plans to launch a new pro version of its studio display in June of this year that is also 27 inches, but is a mini LED display. Now he does shoot down the idea that we'll see an iMac Pro this summer because look, many people actually thought that this studio display looked like an iMac because it had Apple Silicon inside it and a webcam, but it wasn't, it was the studio display. And you know, see, Apple can still pull a fast one on the rumor mills, just be careful about that. But that also left a lot of you still wondering what is the future of the iMac Pro? We're just gonna have to wait and see. It's kind of like a toss up. We're not really sure. All right, let's talk iPhone SE and we had benchmarks for the Mac Studio. Well, guess what? We also have new benchmarks for the third generation iPhone SE that uses an A15 Bionic chip. Geekbench benchmark tests reveal that the new iPhone SE has performance that is on par with the iPhone 13. The new SE had a single core score of 1,695 and a multi-core score of 4,021. The iPhone 13 has a single core score of 1,672 and a multi-core score of 4,481. So they're all pretty much neck and neck there. It was also revealed that the new iPhone SE now features four gigs of RAM instead of three like the previous model. So you get photo and video editing apps that can kind of get the biggest benefit from more RAM or if you want to load more apps or lots of pages in Safari or Chrome. But the new SE now has the power of an iPhone 13 inside it and we know it's gonna sell a ton of units and this thing is not going away anytime soon. That also means though that the iPhone SE 2, that has been discontinued. It's been taken off the Apple site completely. So 
at $429 for the new iPhone SE, that's a $30 increase from the previous $399 price point. With the new A15 processor, you're getting two more hours of battery life and 5G connectivity, which also does remind me, we do have to talk about the 5G on the iPhone SE and the new iPad Air. Now, Apple didn't say this in their keynote, but the 5G in those two products supports the sub six gigahertz flavor of 5G, which is more widespread and still faster than LTE in most cases, but it does not support the faster millimeter wave flavor of 5G. That's where you see those kind of high 5G speeds that are, look a little ridiculous, but they aren't nearly as common and 5G connectivity still it's expanding and rolling out. So it's just not as readily available. And just a quick couple of quick notes. Apple has seeded the release candidate versions of Mac OS Monterey 12.3 to developers and the public beta. This release candidate represents the final version of the OS that will be released publicly sometime, we're guessing next week, and will finally include universal control. It's gonna allow you to control your Mac's cursor and keyboard to work across your Macs and your iPads. Plus, it adds support for updating AirPods firmware when they are connected to a Mac instead of you just hoping or wondering if it will happen in the background. And you also get new emojis. Who doesn't love those? All right, iOS 15.4 and iPadOS 15.4 release candidate versions. They've also been made available to developers and the public beta. So it includes face ID support while wearing a mask. You get new support for tap to pay on iPhone, the latest AirTag anti-stalking features. We've covered all these on this channel. And then also the new emojis and more. All right, finally, Apple wasn't gonna go into the spring season without any new cases and Apple Watch bands. So check them out on their site. You got new iPhone 13 and 13 Pro MagSafe cases, including lemon zest, uh, blue fog, eucalyptus, and nectarine. You also have the solo loop and sport bands. They get some of these colors as well. Honestly, they have so many cases and watch bands that I gotta give them credit. Naming these colors has got to be harder and harder on the marketing team. Now the braided solo loop gets starlight, abyss blue, bright green, and you also got flamingo. Honestly, does anyone really know what abyss blue looks like unless they've been in an abyss and the abyss was blue? Unless they do. The sport loop gets some new options along with the Nike sport band and Hermes for all you fancy folks, but go check those out. But there you go, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell to get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with these stories and new ones every week with special guests. And hey, that's gonna do it for this time. I'll see you on the next one. Take care and be safe. Peace and love. <laughs>